Okay. Um, we part of um, organizing this event. It was really important for us to connect with community organizations, um, doing work that was relevant to what the issues that we've been dealing with and discussing. Um, and I, Urban Word has been from the get go. It's um, they sponsored my my workshop and have been very supportive since last year. Um, so we're, uh, th this is co-sponsored by Ur Urban Word and also by the War Resisters League. Um, and we, are ha we have two young women here who um, we're very thankful to for coming here and who are going to um, do some slam poetry. <laughs> and I'm going to welcome um, Roxy um, Azari, right? Um, is a part of Urban Word New York City. She was on both the Urban Word Poetry Slam team and the um, New York Knicks Poetry Slam team in 2006. Currently, she attends um, Wheaton College in Massachusetts, where she is an English major with a double minor in sociology and women's studies. Okay, come on up. I can't, I don't think, yeah, I can hold this up. Hello, everybody. How is everybody? Good. <laughs> okay. Um, so this poem is, I don't know if anybody knows Tahani Salah, but she asked me to do this poem. Um, it's called Seen Not Heard. We were at the movies, all ladies, ranging from ages and sizes. We couldn't help that the film we had just watched was dripping from our eyes, and that's when he said it those words I wasn't expecting, that phrase that became infecting, injecting in my veins like I was the next virus. Move it along, ladies. Women are supposed to be seen, not heard. All eight of us stopped. No yelling of obscene words, no flipping the bird, just silence. Like a child exposed to her first curse, Similar to a time with my cousins in Iran when a man told us that you two should be ashamed, that your pants come above your ankles. How is it? How is it that in a country where more women are enrolled in schools, the men have managed to change all the rules? Because under their chadors, my cousins wear Levi's jeans like they secretly hope for that American dream. We in America must not face sexism. But this man, this man at the movies would manage to shatter their idea of justice in one sentence, proving that sexism is alive everywhere and is relentless. Because in one country, I am being told to be seen, not heard, and in the other one, heard, not seen. If I could get them both in one room, I would scream that my grandmother was teaching education to children in Iran during a time when education was giving up on teaching. When she spoke, the class listened. And when she speaks, I listen like a poetic magician magician, teaching me how to create rice from a single grain, all while reciting her pain. She taught my mom, who with her education fled the revolution in Iran and adapted to America at the age of 16. They are seen in my eyes as heroes. They are heard in my ears as wisdom, just like the women that came before them. Because with every notion of you blocking your ears, you're implying that the years put into fighting for women's rights was non-existent. That Joan of Arc was a cross-dresser who appeared crazy. That Marie Curie doesn't affect your current health and safety. That Sahir Hamad, Maya Angelou, and Sylvia Plath are just poetic maybes. That Rosa Parks' action wasn't important because she was just a lady. But you're wrong, you see. These women have planted seeds deep in the earth's crust, and their tears of perseverance have caused hope to grow. And those wounds you inflict on women, those stitches Mother Nature will sew. So maybe next time, think before speaking words that may in fact be the very ones that should never be heard. And if all this information is too much for one day, then I would love to call your mother up and have you hear what she has to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, two poems. Okay. Um, so this next poem, I, I was struggling with which one to do. I was going to do one called Terrorist, and I think I'm going to go with Boys Don't Cry because Tahani told me to. <laughs> um, so this one is called Boys Don't Cry. Um, I know a boy who cried once. 
You told him, boys don't cry, take it like a man. Boys don't cry, because to cry would show the side that is beyond robot. And beyond robot is unknown, and we fear unknown, so his eyes stay dry, because to cry would crack the pride in his father's walk, which technically already cracked, but he refuses to use a cane, taught his son at a young age to wave hello to G.I. Joe and goodbye to G.I. Jane, who were both never really seen as Barbie dolls in men's clothes, but warriors in army turf. At age seven, he was jumping on couches, shooting at imaginary souls, forcing hypothetical holes into make-believe skin, all while wearing a sadistic grin. At age seven, I was told that closed fists never solved anything, only made matters worse, while he was told at age seven that closed fists symbolized power. At age seven, I played house and teacher while he played cops and robbers, and his father bought him his first toy gun was told, when life's problems get too difficult, here's what you do, son. BB gun bullets will do the trick. Knives and swords, take your pick. But this, this is for you, and tears are for them. That emotional shield only brings you to the forefront of tears, and men don't cry. So take this gun and wipe away your fears, because men can never be vulnerable. And you're almost a man now, so you need to learn that crying really makes you a coward. And coward's another word for boys who never grew into their skin, so you cannot let tears prevent you from growing into your limbs, because if you cry, you will never fit in. But I know a boy who cried once. And each tear in his eyes symbolized an ounce of respect lost from his pupils and added on to mine till they slipped from the face. He told me that he was now his family's disgrace, and I told him there is nothing wrong with showing some emotion. Your tears rebel against society's demand, and there is more honor in that than obeying an oppressing command. He told me that I was the only girl who could ever make him pr cry. And in that, I found some enigmatic pride because it meant that I was the only girl that made him feel human on the outside because in my eyes, it was never his peach fuzz, his voice, or the height of his stand, but his tears that indicated him becoming a man. Thank you.